Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about the best Galaxy phone that Samsung made for 2016. And no, I'm not talking about the Note 7 since that device is no longer there. We're talking about the S7 Edge. It was released earlier this year and it still holds its own. It's running some of the best specs Samsung has put out on any of their devices and it has a lot of great features. So I'm going to talk to you guys about what I like and what I don't like about the S7 Edge. I also want to say thank you very much to Verizon for allowing me to review this device as I no longer have my own S7 Edge anymore and they were gracious enough to send me one to check out. This is TK and let's go ahead and check out the S7 Edge. This is the Verizon variant of the S7 Edge. It has 32 gigs of internal storage. It is a Verizon branded device and pretty much the only area you see that is in the back. Um, there is many colors available and that's one of the things definitely we appreciate here. We're gonna start off by talking about the things that I liked about this device and why I still think it's relevant even now at the end of 2016. And we're gonna start off by talking about the main benefit of here is the back facing camera. And uh, the reason why we talk about this, it's a 12 megapixel camera with an F1.7 aperture. We have a heart rate monitor next to it and an LED flash. And of course, the front facing camera, it's a five megapixel front facing camera. And this also has the F1.7 aperture on it. Both able of providing us amazing pictures, wide angle on the front for being able to squeeze in more people. And then in the back, very good low light pictures, as well as OIS to give us that great, nice crispy shots when we get low lights, as well as moving subjects. Very, very good. Or even shaky hand syndrome, if you have that. The other thing I want to talk to you guys about here is expandable storage. The SIM card tray at the top also has an external uh, expandable storage slot next to it up to 256 gigabytes and it's waterproof, still meets the IP68 rating that this device is put into. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about, of course, is I did a video earlier this year showing it casing the waterproof or the water resistance power of the IP68 S7 and the S7 Edge. Both performed very well in water, very, very nice. And not, not having to worry about you know splashing water, dropping this in water is a plus because in this day and age in 2016, I think this should be a standard. And not, a, not that many providers are, are doing that for as far as their hardware. Specifically talking about the hardware that we have here, we have the Snapdragon 820, four gigs of RAM, uh, definitely very snappy, very strong, very, very accessible, very, uh, you know, very sturdy hardware. And I think a lot of manufacturers use that setup. The four gigs of RAM support the TouchWiz interface. I did update the interface to GoodLock. I'll show you guys, or I'll leave you guys a link in the description below if you'd like to check that out. GoodLock gives you the ability of having something closer to AOSP as far as the toggles, and it takes away from uh, the standard TouchWiz interface. You're able to add shortcuts. We'll go back here. Shortcuts here on the lock screen, as well as the ability to change the way our recent app starts working. And then we also have the ability of adding shortcuts here. Very, very nice. Again, I'll give you guys a link for the video on that. Um, oh, keeping in the sense of hardware, we have 5.5 inch Quad HD display, very, very nice color representations. I mean, I took some pictures here last weekend. We were at a pumpkin patch with my son and my wife, and you could see amazing color reproduction. And even here through the camera, you can see it looks very, very nice. And that's not, that's something that you can't really say too much about other devices, especially with 1.7, as far as the aperture that we have here. Um, wireless charging and headphone jack. These are things that yeah, I liked about it. The fact is we not only have wireless charging, we also have fast wireless charging. So it was an upgrade from last year's wireless charging that we got with Samsung. Now we have fast wireless charging and it also works the same way as far as the actual connector, which gives us the ability to charge uh, really quick and top off without having to worry too much about it. And the inclusion of the headphone jack, unfortunately it's a feature now because a lot of manufacturers are starting to remove this from their devices. Motorola, Apple starting to do it. And if I'm not mistaken, Elico also, uh, this is another manufacturer from China that's coming to the US in the near future, also have, has removed the headphone jack. So we're gonna start seeing more and more manufacturers removing that from there. Um, and I do appreciate having it here because it, this helps improve the quality of the audio on the S7 Edge, which is something I wish was a little bit better. Speaking of things that I wasn't exactly too keen on, let's go ahead and switch over to the things that I'm not so happy about. Audio quality out of the playback from this device, when you compare it to the HTC 10, when you compare it to the V10 from LG, you realize that the S7 Edge really kind of fell, falls short. It's acceptable, it's not bad by any means, but it just falls short. We have a single firing speaker, no stereo speakers, and even the sound that comes out of the headphone jack is not exactly the best. Again, I'll give you guys a link in the description below. I did do some testing, audio testing playback between this device and some of the other ones. Uh, last thing, I want a couple, couple more things I want to mention to you guys is we don't have a replaceable battery. A lot of people could argue, honestly, that the Note 7 debacle could have been easily fixed if it had a replaceable battery, because you could have just opened it up, replaced the battery, put in a new cell, and everything would have been fine. 
Again, this is a debatable really because if you want IP68 and you want battery, replaceable battery, you would have had to suffer with having screws put in on the back and having water sealing and then the device would not be this sleek, this, this, this nicely designed glass on glass with Gorilla Glass 4 on the front. The last thing I'm going to mention to you guys is only a gripe with the S7 Edge and the S7 as the Note 7 has already moved on from this, but again, Note 7 has, is no more. But the S8 and S8 Edge more than likely will have Type-C and that will be future-proofing this device. We still have fast charging, it's just that it's micro USB, more than likely what you have currently, but again, for 2016, at the end of the year, we should have had Type-C from the beginning with, with Samsung and they chose to stick with micro USB. But it's really good, very, very nice, has uh, you know the Gear VR compatibility, works very good even with the brand new version of the Gear VR. Definitely a solid device, supported by the Verizon network, of course, which is one of the fastest networks that we have here in the US. Uh, but other than that, it really is just an amazing device, even at the end of 2016. At the end of the day, when you're comparing the S7 Edge with any of the other devices that Samsung put out this year, you really cannot ignore the fact that the sheer size, the 5.5 inch Quad HD display, uh, you have four gigs of RAM, you have fast charging, wireless fast charging, expandable storage, IP68 rating. You have so many things going on for this device. And the reality of the matter is the things that I don't like about it that I showed you with the hands-on are very few and far apart that, well, in reality, the Note 7 did address, but unfortunately the Note 7 is not there. So when the S8 or the S8 Edge, depending when those naming and if the Galaxy name ever actually stays around, uh, we'll see new versions of this device, more than likely we'll have Type-C, we'll have more functionalities out of there, maybe the Snapdragon 821 or maybe even a total Exynos processor. In the meantime, I'm going to say if you're going to pick up a device and you don't have a Note 7 anymore, the S7 Edge, definitely from Verizon or any of the other carriers, will definitely do you right. Uh, it will give you some of the best pictures you're going to be able to get in low light with that f1.7 aperture. Uh, it's going to give you some of the best experience as far as, you know, just playback and enjoying uh, content and quick charging on the device, both wirelessly and wired. So a lot of great things going on for it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you still have your S7 Edge? And have you actually even had to go back to it from the Note 7? Uh, but other than that, thank you very much for the support. Like and subscribe as usual, you know, and I will see you guys in the next one.